And we are live. We're on the uh, Full Circle page, and I'm Seth Mosley, and I'm going to be talking to you today about songwriters, talking to you who are writing songs and giving you some reasons why your songs are probably not getting cut if you're struggling. But before we jump too far in, I just want to make sure we're all set, and um, if you guys can just give me a shout, send me a comment, let me know that you're watching, that you can see me, let me know where you're watching from, and um, Facebook Live, we do these things, we want them to be totally interactive, so feel free to chime in, I am going to ha be having these comments right in front of me, but I titled what we're doing today, Songwriters, this is why your songs are not getting cut. And it's four things that are holding you back and holding your songs back and what you can do to fix them. So if everybody's good, I'm just going to go ahead and jump straight in. And I'm looking to see if I can see a comment. Maybe somebody can post. Okay, hey, I'm seeing Scott Groom from Sydney, Australia. All right, so here we go. Songwriters, number one. I'm going to go through all the problems. And the first one is that the demos are not good enough. Yes, the demo does matter. We have this phrase around here at Full Circle Music that it's really, really important to treat your demos just like they're masters. Uh, we do not differentiate at all in the process. When I'm writing a song with an artist, it's as important to me what the demo sounds like as if the lyric is perfectly dialed in. Now, the reason behind this is because there's this concept called song meetings that labels and publishers and managers and artists do. When it's time to go in and make a record, uh, you have what's called a song meeting. And all that is is, is exactly what you would think it is. Um, you sit around a table, listen through all of the songs that are in the running for a record. For one record, sometimes it can be uh, upwards of 80 songs that the artist has written over the course of a year for that particular record. So what happens is you literally just go through, you maybe don't even listen to the whole song, a verse, a chorus, and the team just really kind of votes yay or nay. And It's very much based on the energy in the room. Um, it's based on, you know, what's the response? Is there an emotional response to it? Because ultimately that's what labels who put out songs are are, are uh, making their decisions based off of what they think will elicit a, an emotional response, which is the reason why people, a listener, would click buy on a song on iTunes. So it's really about that 30 seconds, 45 seconds maybe that you'll get in that song meeting. Now, I've been through so many song meetings over the course of working as a music producer and as a songwriter in Nashville that I've learned the, the most important thing is the demo has to sell it right away. They can't leave any room for imagination. A lot of people ask, well, is it, you know, what if I'm not a producer? Um, you know, it, can people just hear past a bad demo? Like, can it, can it be an iPhone work tape? And the answer really is no. It can't be. It used to be that way, but you can't rely on that anymore. And I've just seen so many times where I know that the best songs didn't always win because they were kind of hidden behind a great demo or, or a bad demo. Um, so here's the thing. If you're not a producer, you don't need to stress out over this part. I'm going to go over the solutions after I go through the problems. But I'm simply going through four reasons why your songs are not getting cut. And then I'm going to talk about what you can do to fix those. So point number one your demos just are not good enough. Got to make good demos. Uh, point number two, you write songs all by yourself. I can't count how many times people have come through our uh, Full Circle Academy events or songwriter retreats and said, you know what, Seth, I, I feel like I write my best songs on my own, like in my room. I, I just wait for inspiration to strike, and and that's when uh, that's when the magic happens. And Sure, okay, maybe that's true, but here's the deal. Anybody that I've heard say that ends up going down a long road of banging their head against the wall because on your own, 
you're only going to come up with the same things over and over again. I, I, even my, myself, I've been doing this for, for 10 years. I've written probably upwards of 700, 800 songs. And I know I have my defaults. So what the answer to that is, is collaboration. I'm going to challenge you to not just take that as fact, that, that, that you have to be the one that writes all of your songs by yourself. I guarantee you that if you open up your mind to collaboration, it's going to increase the chances of getting your songs cut. And not only that, it's going to increase your sustainability in the music business. Why? Because, just like I said, you're going to have your defaults, your patterns, your rhythms that you fall back into, and that's the magic of co-writing, is you're writing sometimes with five different people in one week. But even if it's only one person that, that, that you start with in your, in your hometown, uh, it's important that you're getting an outside perspective because it's going to just naturally be a different angle than you would hear it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what makes for a good collaboration and uh, we're going to keep going through the, the problems. We're talking about the four things that are holding your songs back and what you can do to fix them as songwriters. So number one, again, your demos aren't good enough. Number two, your, uh, you're, you're writing all the songs by yourself. Number three is that you're not a good singer. Yes, that actually does make a difference. I, I, and, th and this is partially my theory, but when I'm in song meetings and when, when we're listening to records, it's often the ones that simply have great singers who are just delivering the, uh, the, the message of the song. And don't worry if you're not a great singer, but I'm just saying this to, 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 to welcome you, to, to, to wake you up to the reality that um, being a good singer or having a good singer on the demo can make all the difference in the world. Um, see, w what a really good demo is and what our job as songwriters is just to take out as many distractions as we possibly can, standing in the way of the listener and just connecting to the what's the heart of the song, what's the lyric, what's the story. Um, a lot of you who maybe write Christian or country music, it's really about the story. So it's about removing distractions, and having a bad singer can be a distraction. Um, and I'm not talking about that you have to go out and you know spend a ton of money to, to hire some giant you know, session singer. It's, it doesn't have to, be, it's, it's really just about feel. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about some solutions to that in a bit. But to, to go through these again, the problems are that your demos aren't good enough, you write all your songs by yourself, you're not a good singer. And number four, you're not working with artists or producers. Now, I know a lot of you are probably saying, well, how do I get in, even get in the room with an artist or producer? We'll get to that. But this is the key. I get asked that same question all the time that, you know, is it, is it, is it, is it, a, is it a game of pitching songs or how do you get songs on records? 99% um, of the time in Christian music, in country music, in worship music, and really a lot of other genres, the artist is a part of writing their songs. It didn't always used to be this way. And in country, there's still a little more room for pitching outside songs, but it's becoming, the, the way it is in the industry is that the artist wants to be a part of the creative process, and that makes sense, because they're the ones who have to go out and deliver the song, tell the story behind the song from stage every single night, or to the radio audience who's, um, who's you know, having them in to do a five-minute interview. They've got to be able to sell that idea of the song in five minutes, so it makes sense. You can't fault artists for wanting to be a part of their own songs that they're going to sing every night. I know. I, I used to be an artist before I transitioned to a behind-the-scenes role, and now I get to help empower other artists through great songs. But you can't fault artists for wanting to be a part of their songwriting. So, And the other best friend for songwriters is music producers. The best thing you can do if you're not a musician or if you're not skilled as a, a, a track guy, we'll get to what that means here in a little bit, but um, you can't, like, you, you just can't underestimate the value of having a relationship with a really good music producer, even if it's just one that you collaborate with regularly. I've seen it work so well being, you know, a three-way situation where there's a producer, there's an artist, and then there's a songwriter or what often we call a 
a top liner. And those are the people that don't really run Pro Tools. They don't really um, play a ton of instruments super well. But they're there to make sure that the melodies and the lyrics are of the highest quality. And they're essentially uh, serving in that way. So I've seen three ways work time and time and time again. I've also seen two ways work. I've seen four ways work. I've seen them all work. But the point is, as a songwriter, you are going to want to go out of your way to make friends with music producers because they're ultimately going to be your way in. And for a lot of you who are producers, um, the great, uh, I call it the, 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 the double threat, is being able to write and produce. Because what production does is it opens you up to a relationship, uh, a trust building with artists. And what's just absolutely incredible about that is that in production, it takes a lot of time. Production is one of those things where you're in the trenches. It's a lot of details, and you're working side by side with an artist. So you're going to naturally develop a lot of trust, and artists are going to want to write with people who they trust. Now, when artists are new and starting out, they're going to be willing to write with more people that um, maybe aren't uh, how, how do I say it? Like th they're just they're in the experimentation phase. But after a while, artists get tired and they want to just hunker down with people that they're used to working with and that they've established trust with. So um, those are the four problems. Again, to summarize those uh, four things that could be holding your songs back: number one, your demos aren't good enough; number two, you write all your songs by yourself; number three, you're not a good singer; or number four, you aren't writing with artists and producers. You're focusing on pitching songs. All right, you guys with me so far? If you're with me, leave a comment, hit the like button. Uh, I am on Facebook right now. See Colin Richard. Hey, how you doing, man? Let me know where you guys are watching in from. And Colin's got a good question. Is there a good method of finding someone to write with? Yes, Colin. We're going to dive into that in the solutions section, which is coming up right now. So <laughs> as answers to how to fix some of these problems, um, to, to, to demos. Let's talk about demos. Number one, the, be, the demos not being good enough. Here's my solution. My solution is that you should go and spend a lot of time either learning the basics of a DAW and home recording. Now, really quick, what's a DAW? Digital Audio Workstation. That's something like Logic Pro, GarageBand, Ableton Live, uh, Fruity Loops, Pro Tool, uh, any of those things. Those are all, that's what we call a DAW. So spend time learning that. Um, there's a ton of free content out there on YouTube. Um, and then the other option is that you can collaborate with somebody who is a good track guy. Now, it doesn't obviously just have to be a guy, it can be a girl too, but what's a track guy? A track guy is someone who knows Pro Tools or Logic inside out, is a quick programmer, can probably play a lot of instruments, um, can mix decently well, can edit decently well. And if you're a songwriter who's not one, they are your best friend. So um, find a track guy if you're not one, or do the hard work and learn the DAWs. Again, there's tons of free content out there on YouTube. Um, our page, you can check it out. It's at official FC music, just youtube.com slash at official FC music. If you're watching on your computer, just type that in. Head over there, subscribe. We are going to be ramping up an absolute ton of content in 2018 just for that specific purpose. Lots of how-to videos. Uh, if you're people wanting to learn Logic Pro and Pro Tools, we're going to be just dumping tons and tons and tons of free content on YouTube. So again, subscribe to our page, youtube.com slash at official FC music. Our mission is to be the only place that you need to turn on YouTube, to be the best channel for aspiring songwriters and music producers. So head over there. Um, so that's the first thing, is learning the basics of a good DAW and home recording or collaborating with a good track guy. Uh, number two, you don't write all your songs by yourself. Here's what I'll say. Uh, Co-write. Collaboration is absolutely king. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't tell you a single person who has entered into the co-writing space and said, no, that, that wasn't for me. I think I'll go back to doing it myself. Um, in the years of us doing this and in the 100-plus uh, episodes we've done of our podcast, I've never met a songwriter that has went back to, to doing it that way. So learn to collaborate. 
learn to uh, become a good co-writer and not just a good songwriter. Now, some keys on collaboration. It's really more about the process and about the relationship than it even is about um, the result or the song at the end of the day. Uh, I, I always tell people that you know, it's really more about being a good hang, it's about being a good friend, and it's about um, not digging in your heels to any particular idea, not getting too married to any one particular idea. I've been in the room with a lot of really awkward uh, songwriting sessions over, over the years with people that just get stuck on this one idea and they will not get off of it. And what happens is that just creates a absolute... Um, just a horrible atmosphere in the room because the whole thing is when you're in a songwriting session, it has to be a safe place because it's a vulnerable situation. I mean, songwriting is is essentially, you know, you got to walk into a room with people that you maybe have never met before and you've got to go emotionally deep really, really quickly. Um, so it, it's really hard, but it can be learned. It's not, a, it's not just a thing where you, you can... You've got it or you don't. It's it's a skill that you can develop just like anything else, just like walking or riding a bike. So learn to co-write. Um, for the third problem, that you're not a good singer, well, there's a few solutions, obviously. First one would be to just work on your voice. Uh, again, there's a ton of great free YouTube content out there. Um, take some vocal lessons. Uh, sing, you know. I mean, the, the best way to get better at singing is to sing and sing in front of people and ask people how you did and get feedback. Second thing you can do is to work on vocal editing. See, we always tell singers that I would much rather have the feel and the tone than perfection. Like, timing and pitch can be corrected. Uh, that's stuff that we fix all the time on the back end. And so get good at vocal editing. Again, there are a ton of free resources on YouTube for this. If you just Google um, auto-tune, how-to, or... Melodyne how-to. Melodyne is a tool that I prefer to use for vocal editing, but there's a great free tool even in Logic Pro that's called FlexTime. Um, so get good at that. And then the other part is, again, collaboration. Work with somebody who actually is a good singer. Trust me, this part is really important. I, I've heard a lot of songs that I'm like, ah, I, I can hear where you're going, but the voice is just distracting me, and I can't get into, like, I don't know if I like the melody, I don't know if I like the lyric, because... I just can't hear past, like, you know, just a, a bad vocal performance or a bad vocal edit. So, again, collaboration can be the answer to that part as well. So, um, and then once you're getting into work with artists, you know, chances are they're already um, pretty decent singers. So, that's the fourth point to get in the room with A lists, artists, and songwriters. How do you do that? And that's back to Colin's question that, uh, you know how do you get in? How do you get in rooms with these these A list people? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about. The first thing you've got to realize is that to get in on that, you have to be adding massive value. Um, you got to realize that when when you're invited into a room, they're actually doing you a favor as a new artist because they don't know they're taking a chance on you. And I'm talking about established artists here, so they're taking a chance uh, and not knowing what the outcome is going to be. So you have to be adding value. Adding value can look like a lot of different things. Um, it can be that you're a great track guy, and at the end of the day, they know they're going to get a good demo without having to pay for it. Yes, that actually is the case for a, a lot of people, and that's, you know, I probably had a lot of sessions when I moved to Nashville where that was my uh, competitive advantage, was that they knew that at the end of the day, the song was going to sound great and that they could take it into a song meeting and be proud when they hit play and, th and they don't have to use disclaimers and say oh you, you know this is a w rough work tape but if you can just imagine it sounding like Coldplay or something no we, we just made it sound like that right from the beginning so that can be adding value second thing could be making an introduction um, introductions to people that they maybe want to work with that you somehow have a relationship with from over the years I've seen some great writing uh, relationships evolve that way. We actually had a, had a chance recently on our podcast to interview one of my best friends in the business, uh, one of my favorite artists, Sam Tenez. Um, he is just absolutely 
killing it in the film and TV space. And he told us the story on, on, our, on our podcast about how he first got connected with Matt Bronlewy and Maggie Reed. It was really just him making an introduction. Um, I think he knew Maggie, and she needed to work with a producer, or one, one or the other. But literally, him offering the introduction was what got him in the room. And that's become an absolutely um, lucrative, incredible uh, creative relationship. And they've made tons of money, had some great film and TV placements. So you got to go in knowing that you've got to add value. Um, and you're probably, here's the reality, I, I don't, I don't want to do these Facebook lives and hype you up that it's going to be this super easy road. You probably won't be able to honestly add tons and tons of value right at the start. So here's what I would say. Start with writing with up-and-coming artists and songwriters. That's what I did. That's what everybody does. Um, you can't expect to be right at the beginning and getting involved if you're, if you're a, uh, an aspiring country songwriter to, to be invited into a room with Lady Antebellum or Ketty Chesney or whoever you're looking up to. Um, you've got to start with the up-and-comers. And then what happens, and this is 99 times out of 100 how people get on the map as songwriters, is um, they're writing with some unknown who then uh, they have a song that blows up on the radio and then all of a sudden they're the coolest thing since sliced bread and then everybody wants to get in the room with them. So um, it, it really is that simple, just starting wherever you're at and, and, and um, working with tons of people up and coming. And usually if they have success, what I've seen is that they tend to bring you with them because hopefully over the over the uh, course of your creative relationship with them, you've treated them well, you've prioritized the friendship more than just the result, and you've really um, embodied what it means to serve them. So that's our advice, um, is really on the, on the front end, it's more about the relationship than it is the result. So still with me? Leave me a comment if you are. And I'm going to take the last five to ten minutes of this uh, Facebook Live to answer any questions. So if you've got any, shoot them over to me. Let's see. I'm looking through this Facebook page. I've seen some of the comments, but not all of the comments. Hey, Brian. It's good to see you. For those of you guys who don't know, we just had our uh, big full circle music company Christmas party the other night and had lots of really, really great people here for that. Let's see. Yeah, if you got any questions, type them in. Uh, one of the most common questions I think we get at our Full Circle Academy songwriting retreats is this, uh, this idea of, you know, where do you even start? Like in a, in a co-write, um, how does a song get started? And for me, there really is no formula. It really is about just kind of showing up, let, letting each day be exactly what it wants to be. And so some days that can look like, um, you know, me sitting down on a piano and like playing a loop and then, you know, maybe the artist or one of the other songwriters just starts singing a melody over it and then you kind of vibe with that for 10 to 15 minutes and you're like, okay, well, what, what is this thing lyrically wanting to say? Um, so it's, it, it really is a combination. There, there are a lot of people that I work with who literally just keep a running list of song titles. Uh, my friend Mia Fields is, is, is one of those. And sh like, she just has lists of like, well, what if we write this song? What if we write this song? And, and so I love starting off of song titles. Um, we've written off of tracks, like one of our songwriters that we have here at our publishing company at Full Circle Music, his name is Riley Friesen. Check him out. This stuff's amazing. But I've written songs with him that he has just, you know, I say with him because sometimes it's a matter of him just sending me a track and I'll have an artist in the room and then we just listen to the track, we vibe over it, we start singing some melodies over it and then eventually it just evolves into this, um, you know, whatever it needs to be. So uh, th there's a lot of ways that you can get started, but the, the trick is just, you know, bringing stuff in and uh, having something to build off of. So question from Colin Richard, do you believe live shows add a lot of value versus just writing and releasing content? It's a great question, Colin. Um, 
My short answer is absolutely yes, if you're an artist. If you're a songwriter, um, there's this whole concept in Nashville that we do called writer's rounds, and it's basically where you and two or three or four other writers will um, sit, sit down in a, uh, in, a, in a bar or in a venue or whatever and just play your songs. There's a, there's a small audience. Um, so for songwriters, it can be a good thing, but you can also kind of get stuck doing that. And um, I don't know that I've heard of a whole lot of stories of uh, a label A&R person being at a writer's round and, like, hearing a song and, like, I have to have that, you know. I mean, I'm sure it's happened and I'm sure it does happen, but um, I would say on the live side, it's absolutely a necessity if you're an artist. Um, I think there are a lot of... I mean, what, what we're doing right now, what I'm, I'm talking to you right now, this is technically a live event. Um, we just had Brian Ward and Nick Bray from Proper Management on our podcast. It's, it's, it's one that's going to be coming out here pretty soon. It's not released yet, but they work with an artist who takes a little bit of a different approach to this. They're called Anthem Lights. And um, if you don't know who they are, look them up. You don't even have to love their style of music, but just look at their model of how they've built this brand and how they've built this raving fan base without playing any shows. So if you're in a place, you know, maybe you're uh, married and have kids and, uh, you know, touring is just not an option for you, there are, there are other ways. So my thing would be to look up artists like Anthem Lights, see what they're doing. They've built, you know, relationships uh, online with social media, YouTube, doing lots of cover songs. But the best way, honestly, and, and, and if you ask any record label, like if you release a record, put some music out, they're going to want you to go tour it because live is really where the best connections are. And that's why we encourage people who are wanting to learn more about artistry or songwriting, like go out to a live event. There's no replacement for actually just, you know, getting in front of people and talking face to face and um, having dinner with other people who are, you know, chasing the same goals as you are. So um, I just really encourage you, like, if you're from a small town, you might not be from Nashville or L.A. or New York. That's okay. But if you want something, you have to prioritize it. And that can look like you buying a ticket to an event or a songwriting seminar. At very least, you know, meet some people online and start doing some, um, you know, virtual connections. But live live shows for an artist is where they get that connection. So Colin, that was a great question. Um, Scott, good question from Scott. I'm going to take maybe one more question after this and then we'll wrap up. So Scott says, regarding the songwriting, how do you approach writing in the style of what's already successful versus intentionally trying to break the mold? Well, Scott, it's a great question. I'm, I'm glad that you brought this up. I think originality um, is supremely important. I think that originality um, really can look like a lot of different things. And, and ultimately, me, we're, we're, we're talking about music. The music business is ultimately very subjective, and it's a business of opinions where um, I might think something's great and you might not get it at all, and that's totally fine. We're each entitled to our own opinions, but um, originality essentially meaning, you know, I've not heard somebody do something like a way that you just did it. That's, uh, that's all originality is. Um, I think you have to temper it with familiarity. Now, one of the things and the key um, indicators of what kind of creates a hit song is familiarity. Um, originality mixed with a, uh, a, a part of a familiarity. And, and what I mean by familiarity is simply... Does the song sort of remind you of a feeling or a song that you've heard before where it's not like ripping it off, but it just feels emotionally familiar? And that is huge with hit songs. Um, you can't quite put your finger on it. You know, obviously, there's been the copyright cases of the Robin Thicke and you know, Marvin Gaye and, and those type of things, but familiarity is ultimately a really important thing. So strive for a healthy balance of originality and familiarity. So the best bands are able to kind of keep constantly reinventing themselves so they're even original from one record to the next. I think Coldplay is a, is a great example of that. I love um, their progression from starting out super organic to going almost to 
EDM on some moments, but it still feels like it's them. Uh, one last question from Brian, Brian Bolivar. It's great to see you on here. And uh, yeah, for those of you guys who have not met Brian, you should message him. He's on this comments thread. He's an, one of our favorite, um, favorite people that have been through the Full Circle Academy events. So thanks for watching this. He says, do you see the value in pitching tracks as something that will continue to grow? Now, go, kind of going back to what I talked about earlier, I honestly feel like the pitching game for most of you starting out is going to be a uphill battle. Um, that doesn't mean don't do it. I mean, pitching can literally be you sending somebody like us uh, you know, a, a, a track and saying, hey, do you have anybody that would like to finish this? But, but counting on you submitting a song to a publisher or to a label and them sitting down and listening to it and saying, um, you know, I'd like to cut this for my record, it's going to be 99.9% .9 impossible that way. So that's just the, the harsh reality, and that's why I emphasize and why we at Full Circle emphasize collaboration so much because you never know where the next, uh, where the next hit's going to come from. Um, and so I just focus on, man, you know, get started wherever you're at. A lot of people are like, well, how do I, you know, even, what's the, what's the first step towards collaboration and finding somebody? Um, I always like to tell people that even if you're from a small town, it's okay. Um, that is the beauty of, of Facebook. There's a lot of Facebook groups out there for songwriters. Just do some research, research on there. Again, I always um, emphasize, you know, the live interaction so there's a great website called meetup.com. No, it's not a dating site. <laughs> kind of sounds like that. But um, I've advised people and have seen people have some good success with this. But uh, go to meetup.com, and wherever you're at, if you're in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, then just, you know, uh, search songwriting group or songwriting meetup. And if there's nothing there, then try starting your own. Like, I bet a lot of you have never even thought about that because you think you have to be an expert to start something like that. And let me tell you, you don't. You just start wherever you're at with wherever God has you, whatever resources he has you in, whatever town he has you in, whatever your ability, skill set, level of experience is. The biggest thing is that you've just got to get started. You can get fancy later. You can get good later. With songwriting, it's just like anything. You've got to accept that on your way to greatness – you're not going to be great. And that's okay. That's where all of us, that's the journey that we're all on. Um, so my encouragement is just, you know, as we're heading into Christmas season and we're heading towards New Year's, and a lot of you are probably going to be thinking about your resolutions, um, as songwriters, just come up with at least one thing, whether it's starting a meetup like that or getting into a Facebook group at the beginning of next year. Just do at least one thing towards um, your goals as a songwriter. And, of course, we would love to have you join us at our events. We do um, songwriting retreats. We do production retreats. Um, I don't really have anything to, to sell right now, but I, I'd love to um, see your face at one of them. They're, they're really powerful experiences. Um, it doesn't even have to be ours. Just find something and plug into it. Um, to, to quote my friend Jason Ingram from one of our f podcasts, it was my, one of my favorite uh, moments, he simply said, your calendar will tell me if you're a songwriter. Your calendar will tell me if you're a songwriter. So if you don't have Google Calendar or iCal or something, just start blocking out time and doing it. That's ultimately what's going to give you success in that space. And, um, yeah, I just so look forward to seeing how you guys progress. Thanks for uh, tuning in on this Facebook Live. We're going to be doing a lot more of these in 2018. So if you're not already following this page, uh, follow us again. Head over to our YouTube. Subscribe. We're going to be putting a ton of free uh, content. We want our content to obviously um, serve you guys. We're not doing this just because we don't, you know, have enough stuff going on. Um, trust me. We're we're working on plenty of records, and if we did nothing but that, we'd be, you know, very very busy. But we do this because we genuinely um, seek to serve. We seek to help. And so send us an email at support at fullcirclemusic.com. Um, maybe X can kind of paste that across the bottom of the screen. Support at fullcirclemusic.com. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. Any questions, any way we can help you guys out as songwriters on your journey. I know it's a hard path. Being a songwriter is not an 
an easy career path. You do this out of passion. You do it because you love it. And um, so we're here to support you in that. Uh, again, I'm Seth Mosley. I'm the uh, founder and uh, owner here at Full Circle Music, and we're here to serve you. So thanks for tuning in with us today.